daily we hear variety of sounds some we find pleasant and some unpleasant some are deep some are loud and some are soft each sound has its own character and just by hearing them even without seeing the source we can identify them today we shall discuss what are the various characteristics of sound and how they help us to differentiate various sounds from each other before we start This is Pratima and you are watching Planet Physiology. If you are new to my channel and haven't yet subscribed my channel, do consider to subscribe it now and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any content. Okay. Let us begin with the session. What is sound? In simple terms, sound is the sensation produced when the vibrations travel through the medium as an audible mechanical wave these vibrations are produced by any vibrating source the vibrating source causes molecules in the surrounding medium to vibrate these molecules in turn set vibrations in the neighboring molecules which pass it on further thus it produces alternate regions of compression and rarefaction in the medium regions of compression are high pressure areas and that of rarefaction are the low pressure areas these are actually plotted as the wave form as shown here because the molecules move in the same direction as that of direction of the sound we say that sound wave is a transverse wave or longitudinal wave so if you have understood this concept you must have realized that sound needs medium to travel and hence it cannot be heard in vacuum or space as the sound waves reach the ear tympanic membrane is set into vibrations it in turn transmits these waves through the middle ear to the cochlea now cochlea converts these waves into electrical impulses and sends them to the auditory cortex now the person perceives the sound so please remember we perceive the sound whenever the sound waves are received by the auditory cortex now as we have refreshed our basic concepts about production and perception of sound let us study the qualities or the characteristics of sound waves and hence that of sound each sound has certain intensity that decides its loudness then the frequency which determines pitch of the sound and a timbre that imparts quality to the sound now let us study them in detail first is the intensity of the sound by definition it is the energy passing from the unit area in unit time where area is perpendicular to the direction of sound for example say this is the unit area placed in front of the speaker as speaker plays the music the sound energy travels from speaker through this area the quantity of energy passing through this unit area per unit time is called as intensity of the sound as sound is represented in the wave form height or the amplitude of the wave determines its intensity higher the amplitude more is the intensity and hence louder is the sound as indicated in this diagram the waveform b has more amplitude than the waveform a and hence the second sound the waveform b is louder than the first one a simple example which you can relate with this is changing the volume of your device it only increases or decreases the loudness while other parameters of the sound remain same 
unit for measuring sound intensity is decibel bell is the relative scale which is log of ratio of intensity of a particular sound to that of standard sound here the standard reference sound adopted by acoustical society of america is the sound of 0 decibel that exerts pressure of 2.04 into 10 power minus 4 dynes per centimeter square This is the auditory threshold for an average human and hence the sound of zero decibel intensity does not mean absence of sound but it is the barely audible sound say like pin drop sound since bell is a quite larger unit of the sound sound intensity is expressed in terms of decibel where 1 decibel is equal to 1/10th of the bell This table indicates intensities of certain common sounds perceived by human ear. As we have seen, 0 decibel is the auditory threshold for human ear and represents barely audible sound intensity. Faint sound like that of whisper in library usually has intensity of about 30 decibel whereas normal room noise ranges between 40 to 50 decibel. sound intensity between 60 to 80 decibel is very loud and we are exposed to this intensities in busy traffic or a typical older days alarm sound produced by lawn mower or chainsaw is extremely high and has intensity of about 90 to 110 decibels sound above 120 decibel like that of jet plane take off is considered as painful and sound with intensities of 140 decibel is potentially damaging to the organ of corti thus we can say that human can perceive sound intensities in the range of 0 to 140 decibels which represents about 100 million times variations in the sound pressure at high intensities like 140 decibels sound is heard as well as felt continuous exposure of ear to high intensity sound causes damage to outer hair cells leading to sensory neural deafness as we have seen earlier sound intensity determines loudness of the sound higher the intensity louder is the sound but loudness is subjective measure where same intensity sound can be perceived as very loud by one person while it may be comfortable to another but in contrast intensity is objective measure and hence used to express loudness of the sound let us see what are the factors on which loudness depends first is the amplitude of the sound to be exact loudness is proportional to the square of amplitude of the wave second factor is the distance from the source of the sound loudness is inversely proportional to the square root of the distance from the source of the sound and hence the person sitting near the speaker hears properly but the person away from the speaker barely perceives the voice in absence of audio system the third is density of the medium denser the medium more is the loudness and hence the same intensity sound is felt louder in solids than water than air next is the surface area of the vibrating body more the area more is the loudness this you must have experienced during various events where multiple speakers are stacked to deliver the sound and the last is presence of any resonating body resonator naturally oscillates with greater amplitude at certain frequencies if the frequency of the sound waves matches with that of resonator it amplifies the sound and sound appears louder so here we finish with the sound intensity and let us begin with the second characteristics of the sound that is frequency frequency is nothing but the number of waves per second so here is the waveform of a particular frequency a single wave is the distance between two successive similar points as indicated by this overlapping black 
wave. We can also consider the distance between two successive peaks of the waveform. Such number of waves in a second is nothing but the frequency and it is measured in hertz. So in this example, frequency is 5 hertz because there are 5 waveforms in this 1 second area. 1 second area is represented by this pink color area. Frequency is objective measure of pitch of the sound. Now what does it mean? If the sound frequency is less, it is known as low pitch sound like that of bass or woofer in music or that of typical male voice. So here is low pitch sound. Now as indicated in the second picture, the amplitude of this waveform is same as that of first one but there are more number of waves in the same period of time. So this is high frequency sound and called as high pitch sound. Common example is that of typical female voice or treble in the music and here is high pitch sound. Here is another example to understand in terms of music. Okay, now you must have experienced what is the difference in the pitch. I hope it is very clear to everyone what is meant by pitch. For a human ear, audible range of the sound frequencies is from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz and hearing threshold varies with pitch of the sound. So we have seen hearing threshold is concerned with loudness. So this threshold varies with the pitch of the sound. Sound frequencies more than 20,000 hertz are called as ultrasounds and these are inaudible to human ear but they are used for variety of purposes. Very common use in medical field is ultrasonography or USG where ultrasounds are used to study internal organs. Sounds with a frequency less than 20 hertz are referred as infrasounds. These are also used for various purposes and related to medical field these are used in ballistocardiography and seismocardiography. Human ears are highly sensitive in the frequency range of 1000 to 4000 hertz and the average human ear can discriminate about 2000 pitches while a trained musician has far greater sound discrimination ability. Pitch discrimination is best in the range of 1000 to 3000 hertz. The last characteristic of sound is its timbre or quality. This helps to distinguish two sounds of same intensity and same pitch but from different sources. For example, we can identify sound of individual musical instrument in an orchestra. Now the question arises, how can we identify the particular sound? Yes, it is due to type of the waveform produced by the particular source. This picture shows different waveforms produced from various sources. The first is the simplest waveform produced by tuning folk. This is known as pure tone. These pure tones are used in audiometry to determine hearing thresholds. The other sound patterns in the pictures representing flute, a singer and a violin are the complex waveforms, but they show regular pattern. Each of these complex waveforms has its primary pitch or frequency and additional harmonic vibrations or overtones on it. So these overtones impart quality or timbre to the sound that helps us to identify the source. Of course, this is learnt with experience. Usually complex waveforms with regular pattern are perceived as musical sounds. In contrast, if the complex waveforms lack any pattern as indicated here, it is considered as noise. Noise is also subjective experience which is unpleasant in nature. Noise usually has more intensity 
may be about 120 decibel or above here we finish with the important properties of the sound now just a word about its speed in various mediums speed of the sound depends on temperature as well as altitude and hence the density of the medium in air sound travels at the speed of 344 meters per second at sea level when the temperature is 20 degrees celsius water being denser medium velocity of the sound is much higher at the same temperature and altitude which is 1450 meters per second in fresh water and even much higher in sea water so now let us conclude the session by summarizing the important points to remember sound travels as transverse wave of alternate compression and rarefaction amplitude of the sound waves determine its intensity and hence the loudness it is measured in decibels 0 decibel is the auditory threshold that is barely audible sound humans can perceive sound intensities from 0 to 140 decibels frequency of sound waves decides pitch of the sound sound frequencies between 20 hertz to 20000 hertz are perceived by humans and best frequency discrimination is possible in the range of 1000 to 3000 hertz timber or the quality of the sound is determined by repeating overtones over the primary sound frequencies and it helps to identify various sounds so that's all for this session see you in the next video thank you if you enjoy my presentations press the like button and share it with your friends For more such videos subscribe my channel and click the bell icon thank you for watching and see you in the next video